Hello and welcome to Right Now for Wednesday the 22nd of November 2017. I'm Tim Wilms. The Turnbull government's decision to suspend the House of Representatives next week, allegedly so the Senate can focus on passing the same-sex marriage legislation, has not been well received. It is widely interpreted as a desperate move by the government to avoid the Parliament passing a banking royal commission, since they are now two MPs down due to by-elections caused by dual citizenship. Several national MPs have indicated they are prepared to cross the floor to make this happen, and the government appears to be willing to take this drastic action to avoid the embarrassment. Labor and the Greens didn't threaten to turn up to Canberra next week, and it's now looking like the move has backfired, and it appears the government is running scared. Trust Malcolm Turnbull, after having a good past week, to find a way to stuff things up and plunge his government into chaos yet again. Malcolm Turnbull has flagged his government's intention to introduce income tax cuts for middle-income earners in next year's budget in a speech to the Business Council of Australia. However, the opposition and media have been cynical of the timing of this announcement, describing it as a thought bubble and suspect it as an attempt to uh, distract uh, the media amid criticism over the government's decision to suspend the parliament. If it is an attempt to distract from the government's woes, it certainly hasn't worked. It has been highlighted also that the government is increasing the Medicare levy by 0.5% to help pay for the National Disability Insurance Scheme, so it is sending a mixed message on tax. Lower taxes would certainly be a welcome development, however we should look at Turnbull's record in implementing tax reform given that the 15% GST and the state income tax proposals never came to fruition. An unnamed coalition MP has told Andrew Bolt they will quit the Turnbull government next month and sit on the crossbench unless Malcolm Turnbull is replaced by someone who can better appeal to Conservative voters and the party base. Julie Bishop would not be an old acceptable alternative for them. Speculation has been rampant who this MP could be and whether they are a national or a liberal. George Christensen and Andrew Broad, who are national MPs who have threatened to leave before, have both denied being the unnamed MP. We do not know at this stage whether it is a stalking horse for a leadership showdown or whether it is just an empty threat. Certainly the leadership speculation isn't going away anytime soon and Conservatives in the government are certainly not deterred to keep fighting for their values despite the yes vote last week. Debate continues over what exact form the same-sex marriage bill will take uh, following the yes vote in the marriage postal survey last week. In an effort to ease Conservative MPs' concerns over religious freedoms, Attorney General George Brandis wants to incorporate Article 18 on the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, which protects individuals' rights to practice their religion free of state interference. However, it has been highlighted that enshrining this article and such a vague statement on religious freedoms in any piece of legislation could have unintended consequences, such as allowing Muslims to practice Sharia law in Australia. Surely what belongs in the Marriage Act is simply that a person can still hold their own views on marriage and pass that on to their children, not be prosecuted for it. However, it looks like our politicians are in agreement that commercial operators will not be exempt from anti-discrimination laws and will be forced to bake the cake to use the expression. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe and check back here tomorrow to see what is happening right now then.